Let's talk about phase three, which is a little more complicated than phase two, which is part of the reason why you have two weeks to do phase three. Big picture, what you're going to do in phase three is you're going to use what we call the roles page to identify who has what tasks to do. So you can split up the work. Um, we've created a, an example of the different types of roles, the different kind of task differentiation breakdown you can do so that you don't just you know, dump one person with a huge task and another person where people feel like it's unfair. So we've, we've created the roles page, but it's really your page. You can write, do with it whatever you want. You can delete everything we've put on there and outline however you need to. You can use the telephone. You don't have to really use the roles page, but it's highly recommended because it's kind of nerve wracking to work with people in a group project online. And I, I think that it helps support the group, the group work um, for this project. So you can also use the discussion summary page to create the structure for your presentation. And we do want you to use that. It's basically power, it's kind of like a PowerPoint on a single wiki page. It's got tables that, that show you the things that you'll want to include that were addressed in your PowerPoint. And they're loose kind of guidelines. They're specific yet loose, if that makes sense. And you'll see, it'll just depend on what your course review, what you dug up in your course review, what you actually put in on that page. But it centers around the areas of content, instructional design, student assessment, and technology, and sort of the strengths and weaknesses that your group found across all of those areas. And that's what you're presenting. So you want to create a, a you're going to create a draft of the presentation on the discussion summary page. Then you're going to up then then one of your group members can transfer that information to a PowerPoint. They can upload that to VoiceThread. Um, one of you can embed that VoiceThread onto your actual course review page. And from there, everybody can actually comment and, and present through VoiceThread. And they can actually access it right through the wiki and present, like do their presentational recording of whatever it is they're going to present, whichever slide or two. They can do it directly from the wiki at that point. So it's kind of cool. It's an interesting way for folks to asynchronously make a synchronous presentation because if you think about it everybody's gonna um, you know w you may not know how it's all gonna work out but the way it's gonna work out is each of you will contribute your piece to that that voice thread presentation but when somebody comes in to view it it can be viewed synchronously in a streaming kind of fashion so it's kind of cool it's a weird mix between asynchronous and synchronous um, asynchronous in creation, synchronous in experience. So more specifically, and I'll take these a little more slowly now, you're going to use the roles page that's on your course review page and you're going to assign responsibilities to each group member. We think this will increase your productivity, reduce frustration, it'll make you all like each other better and work better together. So let's go look at that. Each of these pages has its own individual roles page. So let's go look at 8th grade Georgia history. Scroll down and look at roles page and here you see that we've, we've got headings different types of things that can be done um, we have the heading of outlining major presentation points on the discussion summary page so um, somebody needs to type information for the introductory slide somebody needs to type points for for the course content so what are those things those strengths and weaknesses that you guys found in your discussion from phase two somebody needs to input that onto that discussion summary page which we'll look at in a minute. Somebody needs to type up, somebody needs to go back and look at the phase two discussion and see what you guys said about instructional design. And also it might be helpful if you're, you know, typing up those points for content or whatever, that you also look at the uh, spreadsheets of your group mates. If you're, if there's any chance that your discussion wasn't inclusive enough, um, you might want to go refer back to those as well. Um, everyone needs to have a VoiceThread account Probably most of the people do because it was assigned in Module 1, but anyway, everybody needs to do that. So what you can do, of course, is edit and people can sign up for different things. So, you know, maybe you can say, hey, everybody go sign up, take two days and everybody needs to go sign up for like at least five things. And then that way you know what everybody's doing and then you guys can impose your own deadlines. So you can decide, oh, we need to get this done by October 20th. And then we'll need to get these things done by, this needs to be done last. So this will be done by, you know, October 30th or whatever. You guys decide. This is yours. And you can add to it. You can delete stuff. It, it's just 
it's yours to, to, to toy with. All right, so that's the roles page. Back to the phase three page. Okay, so as a group, you're going to create your presentation on your course's discussion summary page, which I alluded to a moment ago. The template is provided in the tables on the page. In the right-hand column, you will want to input what your slide will say to address each required element from the left-hand column. Here's an example of a completed one. It's kind of a mess, but it's there for you to look at because that's the way it gets. It does get messy. Let's go look at the 8th grade Georgia history page and find their discussion summary page. There it is. Okay, and you can read all this stuff. It's basically about the uh, the PowerPoint. Ultimately, what you want out of all this is a PowerPoint that can then be uploaded to VoiceThread. So the introductory slide should have information such as the name of the reviewers. You do not have to put your last name. You can even use a pseudonym if you prefer. Um, however you want to do that, that's fine. But if you do that, you, you might want to let uh, Dr. Hewitt know, you know, in this particular thing I'm calling myself Rhonda. Um, I'm trying to think. If there's a, yeah, if it's on VoiceThread, there's a chance that it could be um, seen by someone outside of this class. So it's okay if you want to sort of change your name for that. That's fine. Um, or it may be sufficient for you. You may be sufficiently comfortable with just first name and last initial, like Kim H. I, I would be okay with that. But, but you know, that's a personal thing, so you decide. So, introductory slide, you got the name of the reviewers. So, so whoever signed up for this on the roles page will just hit edit, and they, they'll, uh, you know, put people's names, whoever they are you know, and fill this out, and you fill out your sections. And whoever signed up for the instructional design page can um, go back and look at the discussion, figure out what were the strengths that your group came up with, um, strengths included. Well, you might not even need to be that wordy, but you just, you can list them. Figure out how you, you don't have to format a lot of stuff here. You just get the information here. And then the formatting will be, will take place once the uh, PowerPoint is being constructed. But as you can see, you're, you're building a presentation together as a group. I'm going to cancel out of that. Good, I didn't save any of that. Um, back to phase three. So that was a discussion summary page. Then somebody in your group, hopefully they signed up for this task on the roles page, somebody in your group is going to paste, they're going to take that information from the discussion summary page and forward it into a PowerPoint. They're going to put it in there and format that PowerPoint for readability. Um, I personally am not a person that needs PowerPoints to be incredibly beautiful, nor is Dr. Hewitt. Um, you probably want to do more than just a, a white and black kind of PowerPoint. But, but keep in mind that readability is important, and something you may not be aware of is that VoiceThread, when you put PowerPoints up there, they make the PowerPoint quality a little bit fuzzy. So the rule of tiny text is even more important, and that is don't use tiny text. Um, if you need to expand out into more PowerPoint slides, that's okay. Like we say, six PowerPoint slides, but if you need to make it 12 because you need to include more information, that's fine. Um, maybe you use fewer words and you rely more on your speaking. So you have notes that, that let you expand on the points that are made from the PowerPoint, but the PowerPoint doesn't have to say everything. That's what your voice is for. So um, keep that in mind. Just make sure that it's readable, it's visible. Um, you're going to upload that PowerPoint to VoiceThread, and um, we have some VoiceThread tutorials that can show you how to do that. But you know, you log into VoiceThread, you upload it, and then, and then that PowerPoint, that VoiceThread, it becomes a VoiceThread. Then has an embed code, and I, let me show you just very quickly um, how that works. Here's a voice thread I have embedded on a wiki page, and if you go to the very end of your voice thread, whatever it is, um, you'll get to this page, and you can click this embed button, and then here's the embed code right here, and you just click copy this. It copies that to the clipboard, and then you can go to your to your page. You can hit edit. You can click put your cursor down here, go to widget, other HTML, paste that code in here, and then save. And it creates, a, it puts the widget right here, and then you hit save. 
And once that person has, has done that, it's actually on your wiki page now, and you can comment from your wiki page. So you can actually do your piece of the presentation once your group mate, maybe a group member, is uh, putting the voice thread up on the wiki page. Then once that's done, then everybody can come in and go and comment on the section that they're responsible for. And I apologize to Vernisa, Marky, and Anne. I hope I didn't um, upset your page too much. I'm going to delete that widget and hopefully it doesn't haunt you again because sometimes um, Wikispaces does funny things about you know previous drafts and such. Um, okay, so back to the phase three instructions. I'll try to wrap this up quickly. So once that voice thread's embedded, then the whole group can um, then present that voice thread. Remember, go look at your roles page to see who's responsible for presenting what, what part. And then once that's finished, you can each submit to the Project 2B Dropbox um, voice thread presentation. And then check out these presentation little guidelines here and other considerations for making uh, the presentation uh, easy to view, easy to understand, and also there's information about how everybody needs to participate. So you want to read that stuff. Um, I just wanted to kind of make sure that you understood the technicality of how you move through it. All right.